All right, let's talk a little bit about um, interval of convergence and radius of convergence. We've been spending some time dealing with just convergence tests, how to determine if a series converges. Uh, but the first thing just to kind of notice is um, within this, this series notation, you have some ends, but you also have an X. So just visually, it's a little bit different. And um, the idea here is that it might be the case that um, certain values of x cause this series to converge and certain values of x it might diverge and so our goal may be uh not maybe our goal is going to be to find the interval meaning the set of x values that this series does in fact converge and then um, we'll tie it in uh, here with Taylor series and McLaurin series soon enough. So um, for now, just kind of go down the rabbit hole with me. But um, many times when you have a, a question with interval or radius of convergence, we're going to start with the ratio test, um, which says that if we take the limit of consecutive terms and it's less than one, we'll get convergence. And so we're going to apply this test, or at least start it, kind of ends differently, but we're going to um, take the ratio of consecutive terms. And so I'm going to write the formula, but plug in some n plus ones. And we've got x plus 3 to the n plus 1. And then instead of having a, a, a complex fraction that's a huge mess, I'm going to write the nth term by multiplying by the reciprocal. So basically I'm copying down this. So I have this. And because these YouTube uh, videos are limited, I think, on time, maybe I need to update the policy or look at it closer, but I'm going to keep moving. And so if you need to pause it to try to do it with me, go for it. But what ends up happening is we have a, a 4 on the bottom. We're going to have a, a single negative one on the top. Um, we have an n plus one and an n. I can't cross out those n's because the one's hooked to it. And then I've got an x plus three up here. And so if we actually um, try to take that limit, here's the first thing that to, you're going to watch out for. Um, the limit really only applies to things that have a an n in them. And when you take the limit um, with respect to x, what, what happens here is, is this limit really is just one-fourth. Um, the negative one has absolute value, so that goes away. And, and really, the limit's being applied to this. And so that whole limit, um, the limit of a constant is a constant, and then the limit of the stuff that has n's is actually just one and then the, the weird piece here is that the, the x plus 3 is still there, kind of trapped inside um, the absolute value bars. <clears throat> and so here's now, um, if you go back to the ratio test that I mentioned up here, the ratio test says that your uh, series will converge if it's less than 1. So down here I have this limit. And by definition, we know it will converge if it's less than 1. So I'm kind of forcing it to fit that criteria and hopefully converge. And that means that um, x plus 3 via multiplying both sides by 4, x plus 3 is, is less than 4. And now uh, a little algebra, absolute value, if you forgot, uh, this is equivalent to saying, hey, x plus 3 needs to be between 4 and negative 4. So this is uh, equivalent algebraically. And if I try to isolate x and get a, a strict interval, I'm going to have negative 7 and 1. So um, what I got here is uh, negative 7 less than x, uh, less than 1. And so what this says is that, hey, if you pick an x value between negative 7 and 1, it's going to 
converge. It looks like an interval to me. So we're really close to the answer. Um, before we get the final, final answer, because it's, it's not perfect, um, let me talk real quick about what's uh, called the radius of convergence. And if you um, visualize a number line, so these are x values. So this would be like 0, negative 1. And over here somewhere is negative 7. And I ask you, what's the center? You know, what's the middle of negative 7 and 1? Um, the middle would be at negative 3. And then if you think about this visually as, hey, um, if this is the middle and, and these are my endpoints, and I made some type of circle here, we're saying stuff that's inside that circle is going to converge. The follow-up question would be, well, what's the radius of that circle? And in this case, the radius uh, is four units. And so um, we'll, we'll do a few examples, but the radius of convergence for this particular question is four. It's this distance right here. All right, back to the interval of convergence. Um, the last part, and maybe, um, you know, we've already done all this work, but we have one more step is, you know, we need to ask ourselves, does it actually converge at the endpoints? And so um, we need to actually consider, for instance, if um, this converges when X is at one. And um, what I need to do to do that is if I uh, consider x is equal to one and I go back to the original series, original series looks like this, but this was x in here um, in this blank spot, this was x, and I replace that x with one. What I have now, if I simplify it, is this. Again, simplifying it, I have this series. And then I need to ask myself, does that converge? And even though it's a, an alternating series, we know alternating series converge if the terms are getting smaller. You know, they're shrinking, they're heading towards zero. Um, but this alternating series actually is just like 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4. Uh-oh, it's getting bigger. Um, this series diverges. <clears throat> and uh, when it diverges, all that work just means that I don't put that on there. If it converges, I would write it like this. But since it diverges, I leave that alone. Now I would have to do the same thing with the other endpoint, meaning if I test x equals negative 7, I'm going to speed up a tiny bit. What I have is um, negative 7 plus 3. And what I end up with if I simplify this is negative 1 to the n times n. And then I have a negative, another negative 1 to the n. There's some algebra in here that's kind of gnarly but this also diverges. <clears throat> you can uh, pause the video and mess around with it if you want, but what does that mean? It means that this is the final interval of convergence, and the endpoints were not included. Again, if they were included, they would become less than or equal to's, but that would be the final interval convergence, and then I said the radius of convergence is four. All right, we got time to uh, at least start another one. See how, how far I can get through this. So um, the radius of convergence is a little bit quicker. And since we only have five minutes left for my 15-minute my video, um, let's just see if we can find the radius of convergence for this. And then, uh, you know, you want an extra challenge, you know, you can try to finish it and maybe find the interval convergence. But um, here we go. So you see it asks for radius of convergence, and usually the go-to is this ratio test. So I'm going to say the limit as n approaches infinity, 
and I'm going to copy this down, but wherever there is an n, I'm going to put in uh, an n plus 1. I like to use parentheses so I don't screw it up. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, again, ideally, before you try these, you, you've done some convergence tests with the ratio test to get used to it. But I'm going to have a... Um, a 5 to the n plus 1 up here. I'm going to have a 4 to the 1 plus 2 n, and I'm going to have an x plus 3 to the n. All right, so I'm going to try to simplify this as quick as possible. So we got this. So down here I've got uh, 5 to the n plus 2, 5 to the n. So I think I'm going to be left with the 5. Um, that's what's going to happen when I cross these out. And then up here, I've really got 1 plus 2n plus 2. So I've got 2n plus 3 compared to 2n plus 1. So I think I'm going to have like a 4 squared up here. And then uh, the x plus 3s, I'm going to have like a plus 3 also in here. All right. <clears throat> Feel a little rushed for time, so I'm going to keep going. So what happens when you take this limit, uh, again, it looks like the limit oh, – I can feel the pressure of the clock. Uh, I think I'm going to have a 16 fifths, and then this x plus 3 is kind of stuck. And then um, – Really, to be convergent, I need to make it less than 1. You know, some of those x values that um, fall into that criteria would be included in our interval. And if I can use some algebra to isolate this, meaning that if x plus 3, if I multiply both sides by, you know, 5 sixteenths, I have something like that. And then algebraically, oh, I can see it coming together. We could do something like this. And then if I, uh, I really hope I didn't mess up along the way. If I subtract 3 from everything, you know, subtract 3, it'd be like 48 sixteenths. Subtract 3, you know, minus 48 sixteenths. I'm going to have like a minus 53 sixteenths. And I'm going to have a, uh, I didn't expect all these fractions, uh, minus 43 sixteenths. So if I visualize the, the number line and I think about the midpoint, meaning if I got negative 43 sixteenths over here and negative 53 sixteenths, it looks to me like the radius, uh, you know, if we've got a difference of 10 sixteenths, I mean, it looks like you've got kind of 5 sixteenths there as your radius. So I'm not going to have time to double check this because the clock's ticking, but I believe the radius of convergence, again, radius is going to be like a positive number. The radius of convergence, it looks like, is 5 sixteenths. Again, visually... We're talking about this distance here. It's 5 sixteenths, kind of centered. Again, centered in here. And then the interval of convergence, I won't have time to find. But you would have to test these endpoints by plugging them into this x right here. If you substitute it in and do some math and it, you find that it converges, you'd put a little line. And if it doesn't converges, you would have to leave it the way it is. So I'm just about out of time. Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Good luck, and I'll see you soon.